end of the year where we look towards the future and break down our most anticipated titles releasing in 2018. Now it's gonna be a busy year, so as we usually do it, we're gonna divide this into two videos. This video is only covering the first half of 2018 and it's already packed. We'll talk about stuff releasing next summer and fall in another video. And also please keep in mind, release dates are kind of subject to change, but let's get started off with number 10. Kicking off January 2018, we're gonna have what looks to be a pretty good one with Monster Hunter World. Judging from the beta, it could be pretty awesome. While the game looks like a departure from the series, that gameplay is still good old fashioned Monster Hunter action. Now, I'm only a casual fan of Monster Hunter, but from what I've seen looking at what Capcom is doing here, I think they're doing a good job walking a fine line between catering and appealing to new audiences with a new visual style, while also doing enough to still satisfy regular fans of the series. Because as you know, it's probably all about the hunt and that core gameplay seems like it's real traditional Monster Hunter. And now it just looks prettier. We cannot wait to get our hands on it and it's dropping on PS4, Xbox One, and PC January 26th. Next up at number nine, we have Sea of Thieves, a game developed by Rare that you may not really think too much of it, but we've gotten our hands on it multiple times throughout alphas and betas and at events, and it, it's pretty cool. It's definitely better if you have friends and if you're into multiplayer games, but the whole idea behind Sea of Thieves is this big world where you and your friends can man a crew and pilot a ship and navigate, where everyone has specific tasks like managing the sails or steering the boat or pulling ropes or navigating with a compass and a map. There's a lot here to keep a bunch of players busy, and if you like pirates, it's, it's just good authentic pirate stuff. Yeah, it looks cartoony, but the game is actually pretty challenging and fun and requires a lot of actual teamwork and communication. I am very curious to see how people are going to react to this once it does drop. I'm hoping that the multiplayer servers can hold up their end of the bargain. We don't know yet, but it's dropping on Xbox One and PC on March 20th, 2018. Next at number eight, we have A Way Out. This is a very interesting game, one that might be considered a bit smaller scale, but I think it's just as ambitious as any other big AAA title out there. A Way Out is essentially sort of like a movie, almost like a Shawshank Redemption or Escape from Alcatraz type of thing, where you and a friend take control of two characters escaping jail. It's very story and character focused, but also teamwork focused, obviously. It's directed by the guy behind Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which I thought was a pretty damn fantastic game, even though it's completely different than this. It had handled the two person dynamic very very well. Apparently this is a game that you're really gonna wanna play split screen co-op with a friend because it's very specific, but thankfully the roles aren't specific. Each person can do what they want. For example, like one person distracts a guard while the other person runs away. But apparently within that, it's a bigger game than you would expect with a bunch of NPCs to talk to and things to do. I'm really curious to see how this one pans out because sometimes when games focus on weird story things, it feels like an awkward crappy movie. Hopefully a way out can nail that feel just right. And next at number seven, we have Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom. If you played the original Nino Kuni on PS3, you know what you got was a really ambitious and beautiful JRPG that was criminally underrated. Now, Nino Kuni 2 seems to kind of change things up in terms of gameplay and even visual and character style, and it's going to be a whole different game. This was originally releasing much sooner, but it's been delayed to March 23rd, 2018. But I mean, goddamn, just look at this game. These games are beautiful. It's Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli as hell, just like the previous game, and I think that's a great thing. I know some of you hear that and you instantly get excited. I'm right there with you. I hope this one lives up to how the first one was considering it is so different. We don't know for sure, but we're just gonna have to give it a shot and see what happens. Next at number six, we have Kingdom Come Deliverance. This is a pretty ambitious open world single player experience. It's set in the medieval kingdom of Bohemia, which was like a state of the Holy Roman Empire. And the game is really aiming for historical accuracy and realism. And it looks like it's doing a pretty good job at that. Despite the realism though, this is a first person action RPG with tons of quests to do and a character completely customize and build from the ground up in a variety of different classes like knight, thief, bard, you know, classic good RPG stuff like that. There's dialogue, there's a reputation system, and a little bit of survival sim mechanics of the fact that you have to sleep and you have to eat to stay healthy. This also seems to be like a really big game with a bunch of different villages with townspeople with their own AI doing their own thing, paying attention to you, reporting your crimes, but also going about their daily lives. I'm hoping this one is good because for 2018, I'm gonna need a big, obnoxious, ambitious RPG to really sink my teeth into for a long time. And Kingdom Come Deliverance could be it. But speaking of ambitious, next up at number five, we have Far Cry 5, a game that really takes the franchise in a very different place. 
just real America. It takes place in Montana in a little town and a little county that's being taken over by religious crazy cult members and it's your job to shoot them. There's a lot of elements like being able to fly an airplane and have a little dog that is your friend and it looks to be once again like this big crazy sandbox where you can blow a bunch of shit up and do a bunch of wacky stuff like hunting and causing weird explosions and sneaking around and messing with people and basically just tackling scenarios however you want. This game does seem politically charged but reading up on it and actually looking into it when you go past the marketing it doesn't really seem to to say much politically at all. That's still kind of up in the air. We have to judge it when we play it. I wonder how far the game is really gonna lean into what it has going on. But thankfully, regardless, it looks like a lot of fun. And it also looks pretty gorgeous. I hope it holds up when it releases. Now, next at number four, speaking of gorgeous, we have Crackdown 3, a game that has been delayed seemingly forever. At least that's what it feels like to me. It's finally apparently dropping in spring 2018 after many, many delays, and it looks to be more Crackdown. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We did get our hands on it at E3 last year, and it seemed kind of just, eh, okay. The fact that you can't really blow things up in single player, while it does make sense from a story perspective, just isn't really that fun. And the game has been delayed for so long that I wonder if the original concept is really going to make it to the finish line. Who knows? Regardless, we are willing to give it a shot because, you know, between me and Falcon, we are really big fans of Crackdown as a series here at Game Ranks. So we're putting a lot of our hopes and dreams on this one. We're being a little skeptical, but we also can't help but be excited. Open world, crazy superpower cop games are fun. And damn it, we really hope Crackdown 3 continues that trend. Coming in at number three, we we have Days Gone. This is that open world biker zombie simulator type thing. Well, technically they're not called zombies, they're called freakers, but basically they're hordes of zombies. I'm very curious to see how they handle this one because I think it could be a compelling mix between an open world zombie style game with elements of The Last of Us, but we don't really know for sure until we get our hands on it. At the time of making this video, it does not have an actual release date, but it is slated for early 2018, so we're gonna go on that. And honestly, it looks pretty gorgeous. It looks like the shooting mechanics are fun, but I am curious to see how exactly this is specifically gonna kind of stand out from the crowd. There's a lot of open world games out there, there's a lot of gritty post-apocalyptic games out there, and there's a lot of zombie games out there. So Days Gone has to really kind of step it up. Maybe it'll be with the storytelling. I hope it is because the lead is Sam Witwer and he's awesome. But we're definitely gonna keep our fingers crossed on this one. Now next at number two, we have God of War. This is another one that has been in the makings for a very long time, has received a little bit of delays here and there, and it looks like it's finally going to drop in early 2018. We're really hoping we definitely see this game before the end of spring, but who knows? Either way, this looks to be a bit of a send-up of the series, which was once very arcade and action-heavy style. Still has a lot of combat focus, but it looks to kind of bring things down a notch and really tell a human and emotional story. And you know what? I'm all about it. I like seeing my heroes, or, or anti-heroes, age and progress. And it looks like we're going to be getting a completely new Kratos here, one who has a son, who is still probably very much prone to rage, but has been through a lot since the previous God of War games. And honestly, I can't wait to see that. Not only that, but just the dynamic between using the boy in combat to assist you and the ability to throw and receive your axe. It seems like it could be a game with good graphics and a good story, but also fun to kill stuff. I'm hoping that they nail that balance perfectly, but we'll see. Now, finally, at number one, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. This is, as far as we know, dropping on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and seemingly releasing in spring. We don't know too much about it other than the two trailers we've gotten so far, and you know how Rockstar is. They treat things a little vague and ambiguous up until release, uh, but it looks like you're playing a cowboy who was part of Dutch's gang prior to the events of the original Red Dead Redemption and you look like you're a bad dude. Like you look like you're a straight up cowboy who is murdering and stealing and cheating and just doing whatever to get by. And you know what? That's pretty cool. Rockstar really excels at being the bad guy, being the anti-hero. So I kind of want to just play a scummy, dastardly cowboy. From what we've seen, the game looks gorgeous. The world looks to be pretty large and varied. There will probably be some sort of team or heist element. And I'm very curious to see if and how John Marston from the previous game can play into this story. Will we see a younger John? I hope so. The game will apparently also have an online component, which I'm very curious to see how that's gonna go down compared to the success of Grand Theft Auto Online right now. But either way, single player or multiplayer, it's gonna be good to be back in the saddle again. I'm sorry. Those are our picks. Those are the games we're looking forward to the most, but we also got a couple of bonus games, including Dragon Ball Fighter Z dropping January 26th, which looks amazing. Then there's also Detroit Become Human, which is another Quantic Dream game from the guys behind Heavy Rain. I, this could go either way, but I hope it's awesome. And also we've mentioned this game before, but the indie first person horror game Game Agony is also dropping this year on March 30th. These are the games for the first part of 2018 we are looking forward to the most, so we want to hear from you guys what you're going to be playing. Let's talk about 2018, the winter and spring, like what you really got your eye on. If you got a top 5 or a top 10, let us know in the comments. And also, if you want to talk about this stuff, we definitely recommend going over to our Discord, discord.gg slash gameranks, where you can sign up and hop in and talk to me, Falcon, the Game Ranks guys, and just other like-minded people who like Game Ranks and like games. Maybe you can find someone to play 
play with, or you can find someone to argue with. But there's a link in the description below. Maybe we'll see you there. But either way, you know, clicking the like button does help us out a ton and we really appreciate it. And if you're new, you should subscribe because we put out stuff like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.